the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To whom whom shall we go? You You have have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. So today, as Nat said, we're finishing off our Armour of God mini-series for the week. Um, As we promised, we're going to do it with some pictures that show some very different, I think, interpretations Mm. of of what you might think of when you think of armour. Um, And as we go through them, as ever, we'll talk about what they tell us about these things. And with the pictures ones, we always really love hearing from you guys. So do put all of your thoughts and opinions in the comments. What do they tell you about armour? Do you like that as a representation? Do you not like that Mm. as a representation? So the first picture that we've got is this one. I think this is probably the classic image that mm. pops to mind when you think of the word armour. Um, yeah. Yeah, this makes me think of going to a castle. <laughs> you just see these everywhere around your castle. Yeah, you yeah. really do. Yeah, this this is typical armour. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not sure there's much to say about it, to be honest with you. I don't think this is what I think about when we think about the armour of God. Mm. In what way? Um because I think when you read the passage, it reads nothing like the actual armour, physical armour. Mm. Um, so I don't tend to look at this as kind of an image about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is always the image that pops into my head. Um, not because this is how it's described necessarily, but the word armour for me mm. always mm. connects to this. So I have to make an intentional effort for my head to go away from mm. from this. Um, and also remembering, of course, that the Armour of God passage was written in the first century. Um, it wouldn't have looked like this. It wouldn't this, have looked like yeah. this at all. You need to yeah. think Roman armour rather than this, which has very different parts. But because of where we are now, this is the image that always pops into my head. Mm. And it always, it always when, you, when you look at this suit of armour, to me, it feels so restrictive, so heavy, so mm-hmm. weighing down. So Yeah, Elizabeth's just yeah, saying that. As Elizabeth said, it must be... Really it, heavy yeah. and uncomfortable, definitely. But but that's that's kind of I think where where my brain always goes to, and then so actually I think that might be part of the reason why on Monday, like I said, that I I kind of struggle a little bit with mm. the image of the armor mm. of God, because this is the image that immediately comes into my head, and it feels so restrictive mm. and heavy and burdensome. Um, it might do a good job of protecting the person wearing it, but it comes at quite a lot of cost. Yeah. Yeah. It's a full time thing, isn't it? Standing there in your armour, mm. rather than being able to live and to move and to uh, t- to carry on with your life, really. So mm. this isn't my image when we think about the armour of God coming upon us, mm. being gifted to us. This doesn't feel like a gift; it feels like a burden. Yeah, absolutely. What have we got next? So the next image, um, quite a different one in many ways. Mm. We've got this. Um, so this is quite a different interpretation of armour I think and in whereas the last one was um, obviously a military um, purpose mm. and one that's kind of designed for war for aggression in many ways for, for fighting um, for me this one is much more kind of protective and but not just protective of the person that's wearing it but thinking about how that enables them to be protective then of others um, or, or in theory yeah. Um, and so, so I think this one kind of, for me, the idea of it fits a little bit better with what we talk about when we talk about the armour of God, about protecting the person in order to help them do their job and protect yeah. others. Yeah. I wonder, so um, for the first one, Carrie put intimidating. And I wonder if anybody would look at this and still think intimidating. 
Because I do, you know. Mm. I go into panic when I see a police car. Even <sighs> if I'm not even doing anything wrong, I straight away start panicking. Mm. And I don't know if it's that sense of authority and respect that Elizabeth mm. has mentioned there when you look at this, you know, the, the ideal of, of police. But they always make me panic. I, I don't, yeah, Anne's just saying reassuring. I don't feel that. Mm. I feel panicked and intimidated rather than reassured and protected. Mm. But I'm not sure why. Well, I, I imagine a lot of it is what we see in the press now and the stories that we see that quite rightly call the police out when things are wrong. Yeah. When there yeah. are things that are done wrong by mm. individuals and by the organisation as a whole. I think f for me, I have a more positive view of this, but I'm aware that probably comes from the fact that actually at one point I was planning on joining the police. Mm. And I, I wasn't, I'm not and I wasn't blind to the issues that come with that. But I think that probably colours my vision mm. of this in a positive way. Whereas if if you if you look at the stories around the news, then then it's going to colour your perspective in in another way. Mm. Mm. But I, th I think kind of try uh, not that we ever really can be, but thinking about it objectively, as I say, it's it's got that sense of protection and and all the positive things that people are talking about. But we do definitely see those kind of challenging difficult things yeah, that come with yeah. misuse of power as yeah. well as normal power yeah I, th I think you're right i think it's helpful for us to recognize that for many the police do symbolize protection authority mm. uh, reassurance but for others it's actually fear and intimidation mm, and uh, yeah uncomfortable yeah yeah I but i'm not i say i'm not sure why i feel mm. those things I don't remember having any stark run-ins oh, with police. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> uh, no, and I don't drive that badly that I should panic every time I see... All right, don't look at me like that. <laughs> right, next. <laughs> I just, just before we skip on, yeah. I think Sue's comment is an interesting mm, one. Mm. I think when I see body armour, they're expecting trouble. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I think, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting point, I think, actually. How we prepare for a situation might colour what mm. happens in that mm. situation. Um, and I think that is part of the the challenge that we see around the conversations around the police and things mm. is actually mm. sometimes you might turn up looking for challenges and difficulties. Um, and so then you inevitably find them a bit quicker than yeah. otherwise. Yeah. So what's next? Talking Stop of challenges next. and difficulties. Um, oh, God. <laughs> oh, this picture's come out blurry. I do apologise. Um, so this is a very different type of armour again um, from my NFL team, the New York Giants, who... Oh, have not had a good season, shall we say. Right. Have not had a good season. Um, but yeah, a very different um, <laughs> setup of armour, but one that I think has some interesting things behind it as well. It'd be interesting to know what you think. Yeah. I'm, I'm just laughing at my... Uh, my aunt, That's my auntie in the comments saying the fire brigade is Nat's favourite. Thanks for that, Sam. Um, I once got stuck up a tower and the fire brigade had to be called out because I wouldn't come down. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, I don't do NFL and I find it really weird because I just think people just aggressively throw one another into each other. Mm. Um, I don't I don't get the point of it. And to me, it just looks quite violent and aggressive and, mm. and over the top. It looks like a poor man's rugby, really. Um, so I don't really have much to comment on this apart from unnecessary mm. armour. Uh, if they just played with a bit more discipline and respect for the fact bones can break easily when you throw yourself into someone, mm. then they wouldn't need whole armour. Mm. I mean, look at the Welsh rugby team. They don't need a full load of armour. They just play well. But um, th This is the point that I was going to make with this. So I'm glad that's where you've <laughs> gone with it. That actually, <laughs> the comparison between NFL and rugby, I, I, I like them both. Mm. Um, but very... For, they're very different sports. But that's one of the things that, as a rugby fan, I sit there watching NFL, getting very frustrated with their mm. tackling technique mm. and how they'd much rather kind of just shoulder barge someone in the face than actually tackle them properly. Um, but I think, again, it comes back to that kind of... What, what was said at the end of the last one from, um, from Sue was actually what you expect and what you prepare for is more likely to mm. happen. I think because, as you say they wear these massive pads and this protection and these helmets and all of those things, it does make it more yeah, aggressive yeah. and violent. And so thinking then as we talk about kind of the armour of God yeah, and yeah. as we talk about kind of that, thinking about 
what we what we mean when we say that and not kind of gearing up and prote- trying to expect yeah, yeah. that there's going to be trouble or difficulties or challenges yeah. because the more we expect the more we will find mm. and actually one of the things about the nfl in particular is that because they are enabled and almost encouraged to be more aggressive and more violent in the way they do things you see a lot more long-term injuries yeah that's what's just been commented yeah sam's just mm. said that yeah right get away from nfl now it's too much <laughs> Another very different perspective yes. next. This one's probably an image or something similar to this yeah. that we're quite used to seeing. I think, I think we've seen a lot of this over the, the last, last couple, couple of years. years. Yeah. Um, yeah, when we talk about the armour of God, uh, we've, you know, we talk a lot about the NHS and caregivers, just mm. generally caregivers. Um, and yeah, I think this image just sums it up, doesn't it, really? Perfectly. Mm. Just the, um, the PPE that, that's been so important through the pandemic, keeping us safe um, and keeping each other safe, of course, wearing masks to protect others as well as just yourself. Mm. Um, Yeah, it's a difficult image, but it's an Mm. image of, particularly on Thankfulness Friday, that that I think just rings true, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and again, that, that, as you say, that protection of others and protecting ourselves so Mm. that we can protect others Mm. and thinking about the armour of God as something that isn't just for us to receive for ourselves, but to receive in order to enable us to serve God and to serve others, to love mm. God and to love mm. others in, in other places that actually might be difficult and mm. challenging otherwise, that might not be possible without it. And um, to follow that call, even when it's something that we have to solely rely on God for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's, I think this image as well talks a little bit of sacrifice. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I know when we were talking about the armour of God on Monday, um, there was this kind of sense of us living differently, being set apart, dealing with things in a way that would be different to the world. So then when we look at an image like this that talks of sacrifice, it reminds us, I think, of of how we're called to be uh, kind of peacemakers in situations rather than aggressors. And mm. we're called to, to live differently and respond differently to the challenges and the division and, and the pain. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and um, that's an interesting point from Elizabeth as well. A familiar one, Mm. and while it protects Mm. the staff and is necessary, it must be very scary for patients on ICU to see this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Joe just making the link as well between uh, the full armour of God, the first metal armour picture that we saw together, uh, and this one, and just how uncomfortable it must be. Necessary, but uncomfortable. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I think... um, as well, just that, that that comment about it being scary and uncomfortable for others as well. Um, I think challenges us to think maybe as well about how we come across mm. when we're encountering others mm. and, and kind of things like that and thinking that actually we don't want to to hide behind different things but actually show something of who we are about being mm. authentic and having integrity mm. in the way that we encounter others as well. Showing something of who we really are, not just hiding behind Mm. something when we Mm. meet with other people so our next edge ah yeah i said this one this morning didn't i and Mm. you think jez did as usual what do you think what would you say is armor Mm. of god and i was thinking about street pastors actually um i'm not entirely sure why i mean they they had a really good street pastor team in in oldham actually and when you went went on patrol with them, you know, they had their, I think it was red jackets and, and mm. hats on. Um, and they'd built up relationships with the same people on the streets, particularly in Failsworth. So um, they were immediately recognisable from mm. their jackets and their hats. Um, but that kind of sense of the armour of God being about righteousness and faith and peace and, and actually recognising that, that for many street pastors, they, you know, it, street pastors are a thin, often in deprived areas. So they're going out into areas where there are where there is kind of trouble and there is difficulties and and tensions in communities mm. and they're putting themselves in potentially difficult situations to help mm. and to ease and to bring a bit of peace um, and support to others. So, yeah, I think when we think about the armor of God and putting it on street pastors, yeah, it made me think of street pastoring mm. and how you go out, you know, armed with with righteousness, with justice and with peace. Mm. Uh, and you're trying to be, I suppose, a, a different kind of presence and, and a different kind of response to the rest of the world. So 
you know, homeless people on the streets. You've got drunken people everywhere from bars and clubs. You've got police trying to move them on and get them away from the shops and things. Mm. And then you've got street pastors coming in uh, with food, with, with blankets. So mm. it's, it's different in some way. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, I, I used to be a street... Well, they had street angels in mm. Huddersfield. Mm. Um, I, I used to do that sometimes before I started preaching every Sunday. And then mm. it was a bit bit more of a challenge mm. um, to be out till 2am. But um, it, it was amazing actually seeing kind of the way people reacted differently to us as opposed to, as you say, the, the police and the bouncers on the doors mm. because mm. they knew who we were and what we were there for. As a, we weren't there to to lock people up or mm. to move people mm. on or to throw people out. Actually, we were there to listen and to be, yeah. a, be yeah. that kind of calming, peaceful presence. And although we obviously wore no personal protection mm, stuff. Mm. Actually, we found that being who we were meant that we didn't need it. Yeah. That actually there was that sense of we we came in peace and so we received peace. Not yeah, always. Absolutely. There were still times yeah. that there were slightly uncomfortable yeah. and difficult situations. But it comes back again to what you prepare for when mm. you go to a situation. Mm. If you go expecting challenge and difficulty and arguments you will approach that in a certain way that perhaps makes it more likely mm. for that. Mm. Whereas if you go with peace, with righteousness, as you say, in the spirit of God, you're perhaps more likely to do things that don't mm. lead to arguments mm. and aggression. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know, people might have other experiences, but I felt like street pastors were generally fairly well received as mm. well, as yeah. you say, because they'd built up those relationships and been a presence of peace. Mm. Um, yeah, I just think street pastors are a great example of the mm, armour of definitely. God. I remember one time um, we were out and, and there was a group of three of us wearing the bright orange jackets mm. and there was some someone that came over and started getting a bit shouty mm. and a bit in our face. And actually some of the other people who were just out on a night out came over and told them to go away, get lost. Yeah. I mean, slightly yeah. more colourful language. <laughs> what did they think they were doing yeah. having to go at us? we didn't deserve that we were there yeah, for a good thing yeah and these were people we didn't know but great they knew what we were there for. yeah brilliant then we've just got one final image we have uh, that uh, felt and that's absolutely request. crucial this morning <laughs> uh, i don't know how well you'll be able to see this on your screen but the armor of god is for everyone even the pooches it's for all um, creation so joe i think we should get lola a suit of armor <laughs> Uh, what's your dog doing? Getting ready for the next crusade. I just love it. Yeah. I, I love it. I just wonder <laughs> what on earth was going through the head of the artist when they originally painted this. Yeah, there's that question. <laughs> um, but yeah, next time you're thinking about putting on your armour of God to take the dog for a walk, don't forget to put it on the dog as well. Put it on your pooch. <laughs> anyway. Brilliant. Um, just before we pray, yes. um, we just now that Pat's arrived... Um, I wanted to, to show everybody that. I don't know how it's going to come through. It's always hard mm. to turn it in a way because it's the reverse of what I expect it to be. But we received these through the post yesterday from Pat. Thank you very much. Um, something they did for Tuesday Fellowship a few years ago. Mm. Um, a little reminder to take with you and to hold with you as a bookmark um, for the different parts of the armour of God. Um, so thank Helpful you very reminder. much. Helpful reminder, yeah, thank you. Uh, one of them will go on our clutter shelves behind us <laughs> so that... Um, we can see them and be reminded of them. Um, but then also another one will go in our books. As yeah, we're I think so. That'd yeah. Be great. So yeah, thank, thank you. you and that. if you ever want to send us anything, do feel free. It will probably end up on the shelves behind us. <laughs> we'll give you our PO box at the end. Yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we've come to a time of prayer. If you remember today, it's Thankfulness Friday. Um, so our prayers are around thankfulness. So hopefully there's something you want to thank God for this morning. Um, if so, pop it in the comments so we can pray it along um and actually we we pray an awful lot asking god for things and, and praying for people which is brilliant but if in some way god's answered those prayers over the last couple of weeks maybe mm. pop that in the comments as well so we can thank god for answered to prayers definitely so yeah what are you thankful for what are you thankful and for? what prayers have been answered mm. that you are thankful for indeed so let's pray together Life-giving God, as we've looked at the armour of God together this week. We thank you for the way that you equip us and strengthen us to live in this world. We thank you 
for the way that you call us to live differently. That you call us to be peacemakers, people of righteousness and faith. And we thank you that through the joys and challenges of this world, we can know that you walk with us, that you journey with us through the highs and the lows. When things get difficult, you are alongside us. We thank you this morning for the gift of this community, a community of prayer to uphold one another in care and love. We thank you that we can come and share together and explore together to go deeper with you as a community. And Lord, we're thankful for all of those ways in which we have experienced you. For those ways in which we can know your love present in each of our lives. For those ways in which we felt your protection and seen that protection for others. Lord, we thank you for opportunities for rest, for recovery, for space in amongst the busyness. We thank you for family and for friends, for relationships that renew and resource us. We thank you for this online community of prayer, for this space to gather, to reflect and to be with one another and you. We thank you for those people who we have been praying for who have recovered well. For those people who have recovered their health and are now back to full strength. We thank you for the ways in which prayer can be a real witness to others. That it is one way of showing we love and care for people just as you love and care for people too. Lord, you are good. Good to us and good to all your creation. Help us, Lord, always to see where you are and where you are at work. And to have that spirit of thankfulness in our hearts. That we never forget to name and celebrate the blessings that you give to us each and every day. And Lord, we thank you that you want to hear the prayers of our hearts. That you want to hear those things that concern us. Those things which worry us. And as we lift up names of people who we care and love for this morning, we thank you that you already know of these people, that you are already enfolding them in your love, that you are already present with them. And as we pray their names together, we ask that our hearts would be calmed and stilled, that we would feel somewhat unburdened as we lift them once again into your arms. And so we pray for Babs, for Margaret, for Clive and Sue, for Jeff and Joy, Peter and Angela, Anne, Jackie, Marty, Judith and Shirley. For Hazel, Sheila, Alan, Mari, Louise, Pam. For Maggie, Jeff, Darren, Kelly. For Kathleen, for Mary and Donald. For Linda and her family. For Joan and Richard. For Evie, Dorothy, Dave. Christine and her family, for Dan, Saul, Simon's family and friends, Deborah, Joyce, for Iris, 
Jane, Joshua E, Lorna and her family, for Minnie, for Rob, for Juliana and George, for Stephanie, Edith, Glynn and Kath, Kaylee, and for Marjorie's family and friends. And Lord, we thank you for this day with you. And we just pray that we will know you journeying alongside us, strengthening us and upholding us with your never-ending love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so together we turn back to our liturgy with the words of the canticle. Christ is a light, illumine and guide me. Christ is a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ is a light, Christ is a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.